unless you absolutely like have a have a true deep-seated passion that runs straight to your heart for that you're not going to make anything out of it but my biggest hot take at the moment you know i have to resist it all the time is don't create for the algorithm to really learn to really be better at your craft you've got to be integral to it try your best not to dilute your own artistic integrity to get more validation essentially and you will find there is an audience for everyone and i truly believe in that Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fun Street Podcast with me, El Jong, uh, where I talk to image makers and light shapers about creativity and their process of artistry. We have uh, a slightly, slightly special episode today. Typically in the Fun Street, I talk with my friends, people in the New York nightlife scene. We talk about the struggle to get to that spot, to get to that accolade, to get through that merit through our art. So most of the time we talk about things, maintaining three, four jobs just to do the thing that you love. Um, In this episode, it is my true honor to introduce to you guys a renowned cultural portrait photographer, person that has an enriching podcast himself. Uh, I, I am now subscribed on all the the (laughs) podcasting uh platforms just to make sure that i know the next person the next legend that he's going to have on uh so today we have mr matt jacobs matt thank you very much for coming on how are you i'm great now you've introduced me i feel like a a million dollars now um no it's it's honestly a pleasure to be here Thank, thank you for having me oh again Thank you very much for your time. This goes to show that, you know, mediums like this, podcasts, YouTube channels, social media, a lot have been set around those uh, uh, tools, those technological marvels. But one of the best things that it does, it connects giants to up and comers, people that have just like the same thread. So I we really appreciate your time. Um, before I, you know, let you introduce yourself, I just wanted to like double click and stress on, uh, your renowned work as well as your podcast, The Mood, right? So that's, those are the things that, uh, we'll touch upon in our conversation. But as we get to there, personally, I wanted to know who is Matt? Who is Matt Jacob? How did Matt get here? Matt Jacob is a flawed human being um, and got here through many, many mistakes. And, you know, where is here? I, you know, I'm I'm sat in my mom's house at the moment in the UK visiting her for the week. And, um, you know, speaking, to, and you mentioned it in the introduction, speaking to other photographers around the world, being able to connect like this. It, it's such a wonderfully powerful medium, um, not just photography, but the, the podcast world, right, as you, as you well know. So... You know, Matt Jacob is just a guy trying to trying to connect, trying to connect through images, connect through conversations, and good, you know, understand the world um, through his own eyes and through his own perception and through a lens. So, you know, photography is is my thing. It I absolutely adore it. I wish I could do more of it. I, I, I think us as photographers, and um, speak for yourself, but I think I get the feeling having spoken to now many many photographers around the world. We were so torn in different directions with, you know, social media pulling us one way, uh, admin pulling us another way, marketing mm-hmm. strategies pulling us another way, day-to-day jobs a lot of the time pull yep. us another way, family pulling us another way, money pulling us, you know, and it's 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 so such a, I mean, it's a privilege to have those kind of challenges, uh, you know, just wanting to take photos, but I wish I could do it more. I wish I could do photography all day, every day, which... Um, which I, I can't, unfortunately. But yeah, so, you know, I'm just that guy, just like you, just like the rest of us, hopefully listening out there is just trying to trying to find his way and trying to find a way that can that can pay for his silly little hobby of, of <laughs> taking photographs, right? Yeah. That's all it's about. Yep. I, I, and that's, I think, uh, you know, the common thread across, again, all my friends were mostly performers, people that I've spoken with on the podcast as well. Um, you know, having a passion like photography or like whatever performance uh, art, whoever does is it's a blessing and a curse because very few people find the things that they are happy to do 
or enjoys doing or loves. That's also a, you know a, a huge word that's being thrown out there. Um, but once you find that, it kind of you know, it has its own gravitational force. Like you, now you take that second job so that you can take a few days off so you can do that trip to take videos and photos. So I uh, totally feel you. And it's good to kind of like hear that um, we are all in that same boat. It It's, it's the same mush. Um, some people get it a little far. Some people never get started. But um, I think the point there is like, if you find something that you want to do, it's okay to be kind of a little bit obsessed with it. Um, so coming to that point, like you, you doing your photography, I love asking these questions, uh, for people that actually, you know, again, loose term or however, which way you want to interpret made it, what was the inciting incident or moment or thing milestone in your life when you realize like, oh, you know, photography is my thing. This is, this is going to be a big part of my life. Yeah, it, it's a good question because I think many photographers have those moments where, um, excuse the pun, but a little light kind of goes off, mm. and you think, "Oh wow, this is this is for me, right?" My my instance of that was on a workshop actually back in, um, I think two thousand seventeen eighteen, and I was, you know, classic kind of beginner photographer, you know, showing friends images and then you know politely going, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's really good," and you know, me thinking uh, they were great images. I knew nothing. I thought I knew everything, knew, knew absolutely nothing. And only went on a workshop because um, even though my ego didn't really like it, uh, yeah, a friend of mine was was kind of trialing workshops, trialing travel workshops, and one was in Mongolia, and it was his kind of first workshop abroad. And, and he said, oh, Matt, just, you know, just come on, I'll give you a discount and just come and be my mate, essentially. Yeah. I was like, brilliant. I had never been to Mongolia. I'd love to. Um, so I went with him and he brought a, a true pro, a professional photographer and he was a true pro, still is a true pro. But, um, so I was like, oh, cool. Like I can get to rub shoulders for a week with someone who who people know, who, you know, he's, he's been photographing for t t 20 years. Um, he shot some amazing images and it was kind of like a, you know, um, you know, a, a nice experience to be around someone with gravitas in the photography arena. And so everyone on the workshop was kind of clamoring for his attention, like, oh, you know, I want to spend today with Gary and he can tell me about all of this stuff and I can learn more. And so I managed to get, I think, like 10, 15 minutes with him. And this this is in yeah. the Altai Mountains of Mongolia, where it was like, you know, freezing cold, middle of nowhere. And we're just going around the villagers' girts and just kind of doing portraits. You know, the light was beautiful, the texture of the building, you know, it was perfect for, for portraits. And um, I just watched him for like seven or eight minutes cr create this image that is still one of my favorite images today. And I just copied it, so it's not my image at all, but I was like sat right next to him uh, as he he created this image in just 10 minutes with a, a father and and his daughter, um you know in a little moment of love but the light was perfect the composition per you know and he just he just knew what he was doing um and i was like i, I for what how do you how do you do that right and so he kind of talked to him after that and he he gave me a tiny little mini five minute course on light and all he did was kind of open the door you know just watch put someone's face in the doorway watch watch the light as it gets diffused or watch the shadows and just basically observe light. And that, that was the light bulb moment. It was just like, Oh, I get it now. I get that. This is all about light. And once you kind of understand light, you can, the world is your oyster. You can do anything you want. You know, the, the, te the other technical stuff is things you can learn by rote, but, and obviously practice. And I'm not, I'm not diluting mm -hmm. photography just down to one thing, but as we all know, if you get the light right in any image, you put you, your 90% there. Yeah. So um, that was it for me. I, I was just like, shit, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. This is uh, amazing. Like I didn't know either time I thought photography was like ISO aperture, shutter speed mm -hmm. and cameras and gear and technical stuff. So no, 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 no. Throw all that out the window and just, just observe, observe the people, observe the light, be mindful of your surroundings. Think about what you want to get out of this shot, blah, blah, blah. And just little things like, 
he put the he put the his kid on his knee and then the kid wasn't really you know as a kid does most of the time with photos just sat there like numb didn't know what to do and gary the photographer just kind of knew how to loosen him up and then okay. he had had the little thing of thinking turn the kid around to to look at his father in the face so now they're now they're actually connecting and you know and so all of these kind of little things and that was it like 15 minutes with this guy was all i needed to to kind of really open my eyes to photography being the amazing thing that it is and i was hooked that was it i was i was hooked uh, i was interested before i was i enjoyed it but this really hooked me in yeah yeah, that's another common thing with a lot of people or a lot of artists that I've spoken to. Yeah, there's usually the technical stuff is the one that bogs you down loving a certain thing. It's that moment, that experience, the moments between the technical stuff that makes you realize like, oh, this is fun. Not only just for for me, but also for the subject. It's, you know, it's a moment in time that you get to freeze and share. It's something in your memory that is timeless as well. So uh, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, this is still, you know, a, a photography, uh, mostly podcast, uh, and we will geek about that a little bit uh, more shortly. Um, but, you know, you are a master behind a camera. You, handsome guy, you could be in front of the camera too. But something that I wanted to put up front in this particular episode is uh, the importance of of your podcast. Like, how do you come about making that a part of your personal, professional, artistic tool belt? Like, why is the mood uh, part of your repertoire and why is it important? It's important because I'm selfish and I want to, I want to meet the best people in the industry. But, um, I, you know, a lot of people told me when I, I started doing Instagram lives a couple of years, just, just as COVID kicked off, actually, I thought okay. as I was, you know, getting better at photography or I felt I was getting better at photography and kind of exploring avenues to, to do photography. I wanted to connect with other photographers because uh, up to that point, you know, I'd, there were workshops or there were there was online you know it wasn't like there wasn't there didn't for me there didn't seem to be a big community and i was wrong i mean there is but it's it's still quite disparate and it's still quite individual photography is an individual pursuit at the end of the day so it's you know you're not you are in teams but they're not teams with cameras right mm -hmm. they're, they're teams there might be an assistant or there might be a style or whatever type of photography you do so I, I wanted that connection. I wanted to, you know, not only meet other photographers, but learn from them. And and knew, and I knew being a more of a, uh, I guess a, a mature starter in photography because I was, you know, mid thirties when I really started getting into photography. I kind of knew that okay, if I'm gonna get better, I need to I need to be a bit of a sponge from other mm -hmm. people. And and it's certainly in COVID, the only way to do that was to reach out online to other photographers. So that that was the kind of in, the genesis of of the podcast but um or at least the concept of the podcast and um people told me i was quite good at it and and i i didn't know what good meant i was just talking as having conversations like this right and but people you know everyone that came on said you know you should think about kind of doing more of it or you know honing those skills and you know you're good on camera and i i'd done some like other not model stuff but i'd done i'd stepped in for other photographers sometimes just in front of the camera and you know people people had kind of intimated like oh you should do a little bit more in front of the camera and i am never that comfortable with it i'm more comfortable than i am that i was but then that was it so when when i moved from i was in hong kong at the time and moved from hong kong to bali a couple of years ago there was an opportunity for me to have my own studio little little kind of two story place where I could have an office downstairs and a studio upstairs and that was it that was my dream so oh, I can wow I can actually like rent a studio and do photos and set up a podcast there and so now the podcast is such a big part of my life um because I you know we were talking off air before, mm -hmm. before, before we went live like I, I I've got to meet some people who are my heroes in the photography space and some in person some just online but 
you know, it makes you realize oh, these are just the humans. You know, they've been through the same struggles as I have mm -hmm. in the photography world. And they're trying to make a name for themselves in many of the right ways. And, um, you know, can connect with them and that and connect with, you know, lessons learned, struggles and what we're trying to say and how we're going to go about doing it. So, yeah, the podcast is is a huge part of that for me. But it does come down to just me wanting to meet other photographers, um, which so it's a kind of selfish, selfish venture. But I think it's important. I think it's such a big part. And, and kudos to you and to, to other podcasters I've spoken to. To, to start a podcast is difficult. Yeah. To keep it going is even more difficult. But it's needed. It's really, really needed. And you know, and um, Platon said something to me when when I chat to him. He said, "Photographers are the ambassadors of our time." And I think you know that can be extended really to to, to podcasters are the ambassadors of our future. And I think like they, you know, doing a podcast well can really change people's lives. It can really inspire people. Um, you know, I've got something from every episode I've hosted. Yep. You know, it's brilliant. It's a free education tool. I just have to put some work in, in <laughs> production side of it and outreach. But generally speaking, I can get an hour and a half lesson just by doing a podcast episode that hopefully I can share with other people. So it is a it is a huge part, but I don't want it to overtake my photography. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, but people are starting to know me more now for podcasts than they are for photography, which is which is great, but I mean, it wasn't the intention. Yeah. Well, if that becomes the lead generation for more audience to be familiar with either your work or your message, I think, you know, it's still a win-win. And that's kind of, mm. uh, even my, my, uh, my purpose for the podcast as well is not necessarily for me, like, I'm already enjoying my time with my subjects. Most of them we've known in the community here in in the New York nightlife scene. But um, but like as you mentioned, it's, it's free education. Um, you know, despite the 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 overpopulation of podcasts out there, once you do find your audience, and no matter how big or small they are, it is enriching for all. And I think that's just better for society if you find. A couple of voices that will teach you, you know, not not as an echo chamber, because that's usually my complaint in any of the newer tools nowadays. It's like we just want to hear what we want to hear. But once we mature beyond that, and it's more of I just want to hear a discourse, a dialogue, and let me decide for myself whether it is correct or incorrect or if I learn from this or not. That's what I think, you know, particularly your podcast does as well, because as we mentioned off air, you have, you, you've interviewed two of my heroes in, in, in two different areas of the photography scale. Joey L who got me started for out, technically out of spite. If you really kind of like put it in a nutshell, why is this kid a little bit younger than me so amazingly talented? And what 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 is he doing with a camera that makes me enamored? You know, captivates me. Which usually with we're inundated with media nowadays. That never happens. But once I started looking at his stuff, and I, if I'm not mistaken, he started on a blog spot site too, or something like mm -hmm. that. It was the MySpace mm -hmm. uh, um, um, Friendster days, and I was just talking. And more recently. You know, a true luminary like uh, Platon, um, you know, photographed the biggest names in history uh, of humanity. Uh, uh, you know, having those conversations with a real person, you know, not you know, not necessarily like a, a documentarian uh, or uh, a news outlet or a channel, like somebody that I consider like, yeah, you're right. Real, real people conversation. There's a few statements, a couple of nuggets of wisdoms that come out in just talking with people that we think are of the same ilk versus like, you know, a trained uh, reporter because uh, they have beats that they need to hit up. So again, up the top of this pod, totally, totally enriching podcast. It's not just entertaining. It's not just the production quality is great with good lighting, with awesome split screening and editing of your podcast. But, you know, 
it is enriching. You know, it's beyond just a little bit of education as well. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you very much for continuing doing it and, you know, bringing on the biggest names. Is there a few names out there that you are kind of like hoping to get onto your podcast sometime soon or in the future? Oh, I have a long list. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not going to give too much away, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people would know people would know them all. You know, the, the, the some of the biggest photographers who've I'm really interested in. You know, it's di it's difficult as a podcast host because you want you want the guests to be able to give you as much traction as possible with your episodes, and you know, to be able to sell someone that no one's ever heard of is difficult. But those people might give you some of the most inspiring and and thought-provoking conversations which is what my podcast is all about so yeah. you know we're, we're trying to we're trying to mix i mean we're, we're, we go after the big fish like annie Leibovitz and um you know with chris burkard and alan schaller and um even sebastian salgado who who lives in bali a little bit of the time so there's that connection where you know if i can get him into the studio you know that's uh yeah i don't think i can do better than that um so you know there are lots and there are lots of people who are who are big and present on 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 the digital platforms which mm -hmm. is also a good you know such a great way to um get, spread the word but also talk about those types of platforms exactly. and talk about those types of so you know the photography world is more diverse than i ever thought it was before i did this podcast um so yeah i have a i have a long list but you know we've got a good one coming out tomorrow and you know, jimmy nelson is um going to be launched uh t tomorrow yeah tuesday well, we do one every tuesday and he is another one of um my biggest inspirations in the in the kind of the travel cultural portrait world um and he takes it to to crazy levels to get some of these images um so i you know it, it's a privilege to talk to people like him we actually shot him twice because for the first time I've, I've ever kind of experienced, we did a original conversation. He he emailed me back about a day later saying, I wasn't happy with it. Like I didn't give you my best. I was like, it was incredible. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, he was going through some stuff of his, his own and he got the time zones mixed up and he'd been up all night. And it's just, he said, I can do better. So we, wow. we did a, we, yeah, it was amazing. Like who does that? I mean, that's, that's true integrity. And I, yeah. I said to him, look, you know, for you to be that honest and know that you, these people who in my mind are so elevated in, in the space, mm -hmm. they're also flawed human beings. They're also vulnerable and, and that's what makes them great artists. So yeah, look, I, I have plenty of names. Um, I'm trying to, trying to get to some may take Christina Metemeyer. She's, um, you know, I don't know if you know her. She's a wonderful underwater nature photographer mm -hmm. who's, you know, over a million subscribe, a million follow. I think she's probably a couple of million. I don't know. She's huge, but a wonderful, wonderful person. I've been trying to get her on the show for, I think, a year, and um, she's promised to come on. It's just she's just so busy as a lot of these people are. They're just yeah. trying to get them, trying to actually speak to them directly is difficult, and you're often dealing with their assistants and mm -hmm. you know team. But uh, uh, yeah, I have I I have a long list. It seems to just get longer, but um. You know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we, we all hope that you hit all of those uh, <laughs> big fishes that you need. Because again, it's it's not only for your benefit, but for everybody that is able to kind of like listen to even the bits and pieces of, of the things that everybody clips nowadays is, you know, that's still 15, 20 seconds of, of knowledge that you didn't have. 15, 20 seconds ago. So um, yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, I highly encourage everybody to uh, listen to the Mood Podcast available in all your favorite podcasting apps. Also uh, going to be linked in the description below for, for Matt's channel as well. Um, and, you know, we, we were, were in this backdrop uh, segment of this particular episode. Uh, before we go to the more geeky, fun, light photography stuff um as a son of a mother who also uh survived cancer uh you yourself uh battled through the same disease where did you notice the biggest change in you pre and post 
and love for you. I'd love to hear about it. Um, I mean, there's going to be a load of cliches flying around here, but uh, I, I think it was, you know, the, the biggest one that everyone talks about is, is life's too short, right? Mm -hmm. To to really get wrapped up with the things that we all get wrapped up with these days um, on a, on a daily basis, and, and and it's and it's easy for me to say that because I I don't I still get wrapped up in a lot of these things, and we again we were talking earlier, but photography is is something that drags us in so many different different areas and we get so i get stressed about stuff i don't want to do but i know i have to do it to, mm -hmm. to in order to do more photography and better photography and etc so you know learning learning that okay you know your life can be in jeopardy at any moment and once that happens because it's going to happen to everyone at some point in their mm -hmm. life then everything else Everything else, just you just don't give a shit about it. You know, you, you are so focused on on being better, right? And that that shift in in mindset and that shift in perception of what's important is a wake up call. It really is. You're just waking up, going, "Holy shit! I've been in this just this dream for the last however many years, mm -hmm. and now my life is under threat. I'm I'm kind of thinking about it differently and having to reshape what's important." And it's true. It's you know all of what I just said is a bit of a bit a bit of a catchphrase, almost a bit of a meme, but mm -hmm. it is true. And so, you know, I started to travel more. Um, I was always interested in traveling, but I, I was you know I was young at the time, like late twenties, and I I I fuck it. You know, I don't care if I don't have enough money. I'm I'm gonna I'll spend it all on doing the things I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I I was a bit reckless for a while, um, and. and you know, partying and, you know, just enjoying, enjoying life the way I wanted to enjoy it and being not selfish, but very kind of, um, very, you know, in pursuit of the things I, I just wanted to do without necessarily worrying about the, the smaller things. So yeah, it, it, you know, once it calmed down and once I was kind of clear and in remission and, um, you know, perfectly healthy human, uh, you know, there's kind of plan in my head. Okay. You know, what, now I know that this can come back anytime or yep. something else could happen or you walk across the street or <laughs> even a close family member, you know, becomes ill. And then again, mm -hmm. your, your whole life shifts focus. And so how am I going to kind of make the best of what, what, uh, what I have at this time. And so there's this constant, what I didn't know about before was I was always kind of in a state of becoming before I was like, Oh, I want to do this and I'm going to do this and planning. And I didn't really understand the state of just being and, yep. you know, by being present. So now it's like a, it's a constant battle, but it's kind of a, that would never reconcile itself. But mm -hmm. there was a constant battle between, okay, you know, I have on, on one side of my life, I have, okay, obviously I need to save money and I need to hopefully plan for certain goals that I want to achieve in life. But and right now in this day-to-day -day life, I need to be more grateful. I need to be more present with the people that I, spend my life with etc and enjoy you know I'd be very clear on what i enjoy doing and that's kind of where photography came mm -hmm. in it's like okay all right this is something i really enjoy doing and i'm gonna go all in on it i'm not gonna be like oh maybe i'll do it at weekends or maybe i'll just try and do a little bit here and maybe i'll just put it off because it's a bit of an effort and i've got to go through this whole learning process but you've got to it was just well i'm, I'm not going to know if i tr it's truly for me mm -hmm. unless i I go and do it and the whole travel thing was a bug as well. And so I just kind of combined the combine the two. So I, can't, I hope that kind of answers your question. It's no, not yeah. it's not really like a clear cut answer, but um, you know, you you just reevaluate everything and whatever everyone says is true. You, you mm -hmm. know, you have to reevaluate what's what what the fuck you do. Excuse my swearing, but no. the hell you, what what are you doing with yourself? You know, is it, are you doing something, are you going down the path that you really believe is going to give you purpose and fulfillment and uh, it's, a, it's a good tool um it's not a tool that everyone chooses yeah. to have cancer or an illness but mm -hmm. it, it is a tool that if you can reshape it as a tool a positive tool yeah. you're able to hopefully come out of the other side better for it 100 percent. and that's the that's the funny thing about life is you know you mentioned this one not a lot of people figure out what they want to do um, so there, you know, people are always in a constant state of figuring that out, and that's always good. 
it took me well into my late 30s to kind of understand what you've experienced, which is time is the only resource that we cannot get any more of. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, how good of a person you are, or how bad of a person you are. You you can't steal time from somebody else. You can't donate your way through a couple of more years of life, let alone enjoyment. So being able to kind of do what you did, it's like have some form of abandon, but also some form of appreciation of the moment that, you know, this will, you know, I'm working on this. This is great. It might lead me to X. It might not, but at least you did it. And I think that's also... Um, you know, it's tough to it's tough to remember that in day to day life with one, two, three jobs with, you know, an apartment that is either too small or falling apart, um, bills that you need to pay. But, you know, in the end is like if that's your spot, you have to like really, really enjoy it. So that's why, you know, I love um, again doing photography, uh, speaking photography with with people like yourselves, because. Again, it's once you find the thing that you love, it doesn't matter if it sucks a little bit. Like, uh, you know, I'm it's not speaking about you, but you, 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 you travel a lot. You love travel. It's fine to slum it for a few days in a few spots because you love travel so much. But if you didn't love travel, you're going to put yourself in a hostel. It's going to be a horrible experience. So finding the thing that kind of like you make you absorb a little bit more of experience slash pain is is great because you you kind of figure out all of the things that you that you could stretch to do as well. So no, I think it's uh you know it's I'm I'm lucky that you know my my mom, my family have you know the best care back in the Philippines. So they were okay and and I was more of like a an audience or just like a a, a supporter. Uh, I didn't need actually a lot of support because like my mom is like the strongest person in the world. She was like, "All right, chop off my boob. All right, let's keep it going. Okay, stage zero cancer, whatever. Just chop <laughs> it off." It's like, oh, "All right, oh, okay." So it's uh, it was a uh, kind of a, one of those things where like, yeah, you know, tomorrow you're you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So if you don't do something fun today, it's gonna be rough. Yeah, and I think you were, one thing you said there, which is I think people don't quite understand. And um, you, you know, I'd, I've met a lot of people who, whether it's photography or something else, they like the idea of it. They like the idea of being a photographer or they like the idea of mm -hmm. being a YouTube persona or they like the idea of being a banker or they like the idea of being whatever it is. Mm -hmm. right? Unless you unless you absolutely I like the idea of on being an entrepreneur or you know an, an influencer or you know all these buzzwords that are kind mm -hmm. of getting spun around these days but unless you absolutely like have a have a true deep-seated passion that runs straight to your heart mm -hmm. for that you're not going to make anything out of it because like you said you're always going to have difficult times and unless you truly love that that the the, the the thing that you want to do or the thing that you do do Unless you truly have love for it, you're not gonna you're not gonna be getting up at three a.m. Yeah, for those sunrise shoots. You're not gonna be getting slumming it in hostels in the middle of nowhere, getting no sleep and and no money and kind of. this and that and that, you know you're just not gonna get through that and you're not gonna you know you're not gonna come through the other side. And and having said that, many many people, including myself, some of my best experiences have been in those darkest moments. You yeah. know, some some of my best best work, some of my best art, some of the some of the best people I've ever met have been in some of the the just the the shittiest places, or you're just exhausted and you don't really want to be there, or you have no money, you're not getting paid, you know, you you don't know where the next dollar is coming from, but you make some incredible connections, or you look back and go, that experience was really built character, or I really loved it, and and that's so I hear that so yeah. often. Uh, but it's very difficult. It's very easy for us to sit here and go, oh, you, you just need to be grateful and happy in the moment. Yeah. So it's just not that easy. Yeah. It's a and kind you, of life, lifelong process, right? Yeah. Everybody says do what you love, but if you don't know what you love yet and you can't get to, I think my I, my philosophy is like your philosophy needs to cut across everything. Work, life, 
relationships, friendships. And one of the better philosophies is like the devil is on the details. You don't get to appreciate the big things if you don't understand the super small things. Like you you want to be a, a, a you want to be a podcaster. So what you want to schedule prep, make questions, research. That's part of it. You just don't turn on a camera and then sit and talk to people. Right. Want to be a photographer? You need to schedule your ITI, you know, get a 500 different flights, uh, contingency plans if your flight doesn't get there. So um, you only get to the, the nittiest of details if it's something that is of utmost interest to you. So again, I think that's, it's kind of great. Again, we're, we're all, yeah, the, we're all people. The analogy that. with um, the analogy with the tree, it's the, you know, the tree grows both ways, right? It grows yep. initially, it grows down yeah. and then mm -hmm. waits for almost the power and the, the, um, the 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 energy to break soil and, and start growing up but no one sees all of the the work that gets done underground and unless you're willing to do all of that work underground in the dark in the dark with no one else watching 100%. then you'll never you'll never be able to get to where you want to to get with it and photography is the same but you're right like a lot of people don't don't know where to find what they love but guaranteed everyone loves something it could be yes it could be cleaning it mm -hmm. could be bricklaying it could be baking it could be you know that there's i'm not i'm not you know demeaning any of any of those yep. things they could be things that people love doing and so you just start there yep. okay what if i if some people love being in a nine to five office job doing it yeah it's great. Lean into it, enjoy it, and hopefully you can make the best out of it. But yeah. unless you have that clarity, I honestly don't think you can find those spaces to be to be in the moment, to be happy with it, right? Totally agree. And yeah, double click on everything that you said there. I think that's a, a nice way to kind of like encapsulate yeah, kind of like the 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 first uh, uh, general section of this podcast. We're going to switch gears, do a little speed round little fun stuff because again this is still generally like a fun photography podcast it's called fun shoot so quickly which camera did you start with and then second part of that is if you can only bring today a body and two lenses what are you going to bring i started my first digital camera dslr was a canon eos uh x7i which was I think they called it Kiss. It was, yeah. Um, yep. uh, yeah. I think that's the right model. I mean, yeah. ten years ago, I, I can't remember. I remember buying you talk, something like that. Yeah, it's four hundred D was the equivalent in the mm -hmm. West, but I bought it in Japan, and they called it mm -hmm. Kiss X Seven I or yeah. something. Like that. Yeah, four hundred D, and um, we all started. Yeah, took, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> crop, crop sense. I mean, it was absolutely perfect for you know, and I there was way more than what I needed it for because I didn't know what I was doing. So that was my first a camera and before then was just like family compact cameras and mm. you know i would just buy it you know i would get a camera for christmas because it was a cool gadget and i loved gadgets but yeah that the 400d was my first kind of um proper camera and now um i mean now i take a body and two lenses actually that's not quite true i take one body and one lens oh. but uh yeah hasselblad hasselblad x2d with a with a 55 and a 35 um which is which is actually a 20 35 20. is like 28 full frame um 55 is like 42 full frame yeah um so i kind of like i because i love environmental portraits i love more of a scene in my in my photos and if yeah. i want to get closer i just get closer you know i don't i'm close. not a huge fan of the the, the more telephoto yeah and end of the spectrum so yeah, and the X2D is about as versatile as you can get for a medium format camera. It's mm -hmm. it's epic. It's the the natural color solutions that Hasselblad have is yeah. just beautiful, and um, they've come a long way with the X2D from the X X1D, which X1D? is X1D. It was a bit of a nightmare, really. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, the X2D with with a couple. I don't have. I I was looking at getting the thirty five mil lens, but they're just they are so incredibly expensive. I was gonna say. Um, uh, but I will I hopefully get it one day because I want to yeah. do more. I definitely want to do more wide angle stuff because I use a I use an X H six D for kind of the close up portraits, which has an eighty mil lens, which is like a 50, 55 full frame. 
so yeah i'm looking for that kind of the wide angle um more environmental scenes more yeah. which now i just use i use can i haven't usually taken off canon r5 with me for um bts i hopefully mm -hmm. use usually most projects now i take a videographer with me because i think bts is so cool to have yeah and so i'll just nick that if i need to do um or I use the drone if I need to do a wide angle shot. Interesting. I mean, I, you know, digital medium format. I just recently graduated to that. Like I was full frame for a very, very long time. Canon user like yourself. I was R5, R6, R7, 5D3, 5D4. Before that, 1DX Mark II. But uh, I was researching the X2D for a while. I just like, I'm a two lens guy. And I'm I'm like what ten plus grand in if I'm do X two D and two lenses. So, uh, but very happy with um, my brand of choice. I did the the GFX system with Fuji right now, and it's a slightly still very expensive, but you know a slightly a little bit more affordable. And uh, yeah, I've been happy the past uh, doing it for what two years now. It's, it's kind of great. Um, cool. The GFX two, um, the latest one. I, I have the GFX. I started with the 50R and then I graduated to the 52S. Um, I have literally the past weekend have just ordered, bit the bullet. I'm going to do the 100S too. Nice, man. Yeah. Nice. I, 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 it's, uh, I figured it's like, you know what? You know, I don't want to wait another year because, yeah, you know, I was wait. I'm always waiting for the prices to drop a little bit, but with the medium formats, they never do. So um, I think hopefully, I, probably gets here on Wednesday or Thursday. So um Exciting. Yeah, to, yeah. Now I now I have to invest in memory cards because the hundred <laughs> megapixels is a lot. Um uh if here's uh, something that is is kind of like both needed and slightly annoying when you are working the image arts is like when people ask you and you're in a random party and they realize like oh you're a photographer what is your aesthetic? What is the Matt Jacob shoot style? Like how, 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 as a visual medium, so difficult to kind of like put that in a nutshell and package it to somebody else. So how would you do that? I'll show them Instagram. <laughs> you know Instagram's, Instagram's quicker than my website. Or I'd be <gasps> showing them my, my portfolio on my website. Yeah, it's a good question. I I, um, I don't know how to answer that. I I I find those questions a bit banal, and yeah. um, you know, you just can't pigeonhole these. Yeah, exactly. You know, any kind of artist like that. Like, it, I don't even like saying I'm a portrait. I I kind of have to put that into a kind of title mm -hmm. because, you know, otherwise you you're just not identified as anything. But, um. You know, I don't. I love all types of photography, and if I can include landscapes with portraits, with street, or with with anything, then then I'm a happy boy. But I don't know to, is the answer to that question. Like I I I am an environmental portrait artist. I love environmental portraits, and if I could tell as much of a story in one image, or not so much story because I don't really like people talking about that, but like context mm -hmm. in an image. Um, I will definitely include it. So, uh, you know, environmental portraits. And then you say that people go, oh, you take portraits of the oh, environment? The environment. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you're a sustainable portrait artist. No, 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 no. Oh, you're eco-friendly. No, yeah. no, no, no. It's nothing to do with the environment. Um, so, yeah, look, I, yeah, I I don't know how to answer that question. It's, um, you know, I, I'm a color photographer. I, I do like the old black and white photo. Mm -hmm. I, like a, I like a load of negative space if I can in my photography i'm i'm doing i'm getting a bit more creative with portraits in terms of movement in terms of um slower shutters in terms of like a deliberate intent to to make a bit more fine art out of an image um you know i've just been editing one today of of a of a sadhu in varanasi who who we were playing with his hair you know super long hair down to his his feet like well how can we kind of show this in a in a in a visual way that is that is impactful that's going to stop people and go and just just generate curiosity so you know i hopefully a lot of my images um kind of garner curiosity in the viewer and and how you say that for the aesthetic kind of function of it i don't know like i, yeah. I don't know take photos of people yeah, yeah.
I'm just glad I'm not the only one that struggles with it because you're right when you say I'm an ex portrait artist. So you just, but you, no, we never just shoot faces. We never just shoot ex. Uh, you know, landscape artists don't. They don't just shoot the environment. They put people or other things in scale as well. So, very acceptable answer. Now I am justified in saying just like I press a button. That's what I do, and then let's see yeah. what happens. Uh, Actually, uh, like you know, it's certainly in portraits. You spend. I've talked about this a lot, especially with people like Platon and Jerry. You know, you spend. You're a people manager. That, that's yep. that's all you. Mm -hmm. That's all you are. The, the shutter. The click on the shutter button comes. Is the one percent of it, right? And maybe the technical settings are the five percent of it. But you know, but I'm big on light. Like I won't take a photo unless the light is perfect for me. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I know other other people are more interested in. You know, I, one of my business partners. He's an epic photographer, and he this just doesn't place much emphasis on the light. He places more emphasis on on expressions and movement and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ways ways to ways to show an, an image that isn't necessarily dependent upon light. So, yeah, look, I you know we're, I'm a people manager, and um, you know the the photo kind of comes at the end of it, I guess. All right, perfect. Couple of more quick uh, hitting questions. Do you have any photography hot takes? Like mine is, it's all about taste. Doesn't matter how good or bad you are. Your your taste is a little here. The things that are here will be great to you. The things that are technically better, we wouldn't like. Think things that are technically below, you wouldn't like. So for me, it's all about taste. Um, yeah, well, let's 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 dive into that topic a little bit. Um you know, art is extremely subjective and that's why it's art, right? So that being said, and I'm I'm kind of, I'm toying with this. I've been toying with this subject for, for years, actually since the start of the, the podcast. There, in my opinion, there is such a thing as, as good and bad photography. Mm -hmm. Now, how to define that is, you know, people have their own definitions, but I think it's important that we do define it. Otherwise, it's a free for all, right? Yeah. Everyone calls mm -hmm. themselves photographer. Everyone calls themselves content creator. Everyone yeah. can call themselves whatever they want, and that's the problem we're in at this right point now. in society. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, moving on from that, I think for photographers, my biggest hot take at the moment, which I see so often, and and you know, I have to resist it all the time, is don't create for the algorithm. You know, the 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 one one of the biggest ways to grow as a photographer is to get more of an audience, right? Yeah. How do you get more of an audience? Well, you need to be essentially more popular on social media, whether mm -hmm. that's your Instagrams, whether that's your TikToks, whether that's YouTube, or whether you know, all of them. And all of them have algorithms that you yep. that 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 discern through no no kind of choice of our own what other people get to see and what other people should see and should like. And so it's very easy for us as artists to create based on what we think the algorithm is going to push out there the most for for, for other people. And photographers are the biggest, I think, are the biggest victims of that because 100%. we we had we had we had social media easy um, yep. before when Instagram was just image only. Yeah. Ah oh, man, it was easy. If you're a good photographer, yep. you'll get seen. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're a bad photographer, maybe you won't get seen as much. So there was this. Your friends of, will like your photo. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was a nice way to curate mm -hmm. what, you know, getting these people rise, the people that deserve to rise to the top, rise to the top. Now it's who knows. But, you know, to, to really like, to really, to really learn, to really be better at your craft, you've got to be integral to it. And so, try your best not to dilute your own artistic integrity to get more more power and more influence and more more validation essentially on social media all that's going to happen is that you'll you might get it and then a couple of years down the line go well, i don't really like the stuff that i'm doing right but now now you're in a trap because you've created an audience that likes the stuff that you don't really like and you're screwed yeah. right so um easy to say you know, very easy to say, but, you know, you will find your audience. All you need is a thousand people. You will right. find your audience. Mm -hmm. And like you said, come, so coming back to full circle, back to what you said, um, it is about taste. And, 
and you will find there is an audience for everyone. And I truly believe in that. I truly believe as long as you have an element of being good, yep. I don't think you can There's a baseline. to be a, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, you know, you could be a lucky sportsman, but you, you, you've got to be good over the long term. Yeah. So having that long term perspective and not kind of jumping into the, the, the chasing the algorithm, yeah. which will change consistently if you fast forward five years, yep. goodness knows where the algorithm yeah. is going to dictate your work goes. So, yeah. yeah, that would be my kind of hot take. Yeah. And again, you're right, too. It's like finding your audience, your audience true real audiences like your real fans your real the real people that love your work they put you accountable like the fake ones they don't care right but the real ones will push you to actually do good because they will tell you if your if your shit sucks like you know they will love you for good things they will give you true feedback on others yeah. so you know the audience versus an echo chambers two totally different oh it they seem the same, but you know it's also it's also important to kind of be like uh, to get critical good feedback and critical negative feedback, so you know how to course correct all your stuff. Um, right? We're running low on time, and I always love ending my podcast with learning a little bit about my subject's favorite most you know, the project that you have the most pride of, the thing the thing that you made that you're most proud of. So Mr. Matt Jacob, tell me about the image, the project that you are most proud of. The next one. Why did I have a feeling that you were going to say that? Like the, <laughs> the good I mean, ones don't look back. <laughs> I mean, look, I, 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 I'm not sure... There are many photographers or artists out there who who can look back and go, yeah, look, I'm really happy. That's it. I'm done. Like, I'm really happy with everything, right? Yeah, there are some projects and some images and that you can be, ha that you should be happy with, of yeah. course. But there's always, like, I want to get better and I want to, I want to like, create this. And I have so many ideas and I want to go there and do this and do this and do this. So, you know, I, I want to, I always look back on my, pro I'm a project-based photographer, so I'll do three or four projects a year. And I will, I, each of my projects, as long as it's better than the next one, I'm a happy guy. Like, you know, seeking perfection is is kind of the drive to success. And um, I am going to answer your question, though, because that's, that's not a fair answer, in my opinion, mm -hmm. even though it's true. Look, I get I get a lot of, um, I'll give you two two halves to that answer, because one is from my audience, one is from me. The, the most popular image I I ever did was one of my first ones and it was a I call it the girl in green and um you might have to look back a long way I think it's on my it's still on my portfolio and it's just a girl in Uganda a, a, a peasant girl in Uganda who had nothing to her name and um I was on my own and just doing this was this was just pre-covid so probably about five years ago now and um it was one of my first images that I was sort of happy to kind of put out there and go, okay, look, this is this is now my style. I kind of found something that I like to do. And she's a girl. She's holding, um, you know, just some leaves that these kids were playing with on the street. And she's in this green ripped dress, you know, the only thing that she owned. And she must have been um, seven or eight. A beautiful child. Spent all day with her, right? Spent all day with in this village and... Um, you know, I was the only white guy for hundreds of miles. And so I was kind of famous in their little village. And that, so the, the, the concept, just like many images and just like many projects, the, the real kind of, the real story is the experience. The real story is the memories of that, that kind of how that image was captured. So that is one image that I get a lot of feedback from, like, you know, people love it. And it's not my favorite image. I mean, the, the, the experience itself was very moving and, and, and I'm, I'm very proud of it, but um, it seemed to be quite popular with, with the audience. Um, for me, uh, you know, I've been in Indonesia for, I've lived in Bali for two years and I've been traveling Indonesia for, for probably um, best part of 10 years now. And there are, yeah, you know, I'm doing an ongoing Indonesian project, which is probably going to be, you know, another 10 years of, of work because the country is so diverse. 
Um, and I have some, I just have, you know, I don't have one favorite image, but I have some wonderful, wonderful images that I think are for technically good in, in every way that I wanted them to be like the, the, the outcome matched the intent, if, if that makes sense. So there are, there are a few images in there that I look back on with, with great fondness that I'm, that are always kind of the first ones on top of my portfolio list. If people ask me to share a selection of photos, I'm like, well, there's a couple here that I'm always going to put in and they, they're just simple portraits, you know, they're, they're just, they're, they're just simple portraits. But I, at, at the time, the moment I pressed that shutter button, I felt I got everything right. So for me, like as a photographer, I had the story, I had the people, I knew what I, went into that project a lot of work and a lot of prep and research and at the time of pressing shut button i had the lighting right i had the composition right and you know barely edited had to edit much but um those are kind of my things that are kind of unsung heroes they don't get the they're, they're not the bangers right they're not the you know the bangers that you know you're going to put out there and people are going to love it they're right. just people they're just mm -hmm. the essence of people coming through in an image so yeah i, I hope that answers no, your I I actually, you know, I love all three answers, you know, one, because again, the real OGs, they know that there's going to be better work out there. That's what makes them great. Um, because once you realize like, you're right, if you've already kind of say like, I got my shot, I got the, you know, Matt shot or the Jong shot, it kind of lifts your, your foot off the pedal just a tiny bit, it makes you a little bit farther from that uh next goal but again i'm that's that's the thing that i i personally have always forgotten because it's always the next one but also i do love the the dichotomy of being aware that you have an image that your audience likes and you appreciate the eye of your audience it is still you know a banger right um, but you have your own personal take of just regular shots. I think that's that's quite common in in terms of like mm -hmm. my favorite images are not the ones that are shot. I keep on saying like just you know taking photos of my food with my friends. It's that's fun for me because it makes me remember oh, we had a great ass time that night. And, and yeah, for, for that's great for me. Might not be great for my audience, but for me, gives me a smile on my face. Mr. Matt Jacobs, thank you very much for your time. This is truly an honor. I personally can't wait to go through furthermore into your uh, library of, of podcasts to listen through all of the other luminaries that you've spoken with. You are doing such a wonderful uh, job, not only illuminating the conversation, but just like navigating through different talk points. Plus, again, being the, the technically sound photographer that you are, lighting is you know great you know really like that uh um aesthetic as well in your podcast um again it's highly impressive resume you know as we roll through the red carpet just let the people know where people can find you yeah um matty j matty j underscore a y so matty j um is pretty much my my um what do you call it handle across mm -hmm. all of my social so uh, YouTube is at Maddie J and then on there will be a playlist for the mm -hmm. podcast. So you can watch the podcast, um, on all the podcast platforms, it's, uh, the mood podcast. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, my website is mattjphotography.com and on there's links to everything. So there's probably a better answer. Just go to my website mm -hmm. and on there you can, you can see all my links to, to the various platforms. So, yeah. Everything is going to be on the description below as well, both on uh, the YouTube channel and all, all my channels as well. But again, impressive, you know, at this recording, a little bit, you know, 42,000 plus YouTube script, you know, whatever, just whatever. And then closing to 300,000 Instagram subscribers. That is hella, hella impressive. And I bet that that's nowhere near where it's going to plateau. I think it's just going to be up, particularly with your podcast. So again, Sir Matt Jacobs, Matty J, thank you very much for your time and really, really appreciate it. You're the best. Thanks so much, John. And thanks uh, to your audience. I really appreciate the, the time as always. And keep it up, man. Keep keep up the um, recording. Keep up the photography. You're doing a great job. And I look forward to uh to watching your journey as you go thank you very much 
that's it for this latest episode of the Fun Shoot Podcast. I'm Mel Jong. See you in the next one. Bye.